Well, hello there. I'm Carol Lutzinger. Welcome to Science Stuff. Today I have stuff in a bag. You never know what Mrs. Lutzinger is going to drag into the studio to see what can we do with stuff from home. And I'll bet there's not many people who run around with what I have in the bag. So put on your thinking cap and wonder what is in the bag. And remember when we wonder about something and we get an idea, that's called our hypothesis. It's what we think. So if we think about this, you know it has to be something that's not really big, but it could be big because this is a bag that's about half the size of me. And it's not very heavy because I can pick it up. So, and is there only one thing in the bag or is there lots of things in the bag? So now that you've had that thought in your head, it's time to pull out something from the bag. And this is the first thing that's coming out of the bag. Ooh. What in the world is this? Just take a look at what I have in my hand and wonder, and I see there's some cat hairs on this, but this is not a cat. <laughs> I had some kitties and they like to get in my stuff. The kitties ran out the door one day and they did not come home. Even though I looked and looked and looked, they did not come home, but there's cat hairs from them. So this is one thing that I have in the bag. Now you might be thinking and think some more because here is something else that I have in the bag. Ah. Hmm, what in the world is Mrs. Lutzinger going to talk about today from her bag? Here's the third thing and think about what you've already seen. This kind of looks like an asteroid, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's not an asteroid. Boy, this would, that would be something if we had an asteroid in here. Woohoo! We would really be excited. But this is, this is not an asteroid. This is something else. Keep your thinking cap on. And more stuff. More stuff. Something else in that bag. And that's not all, folks. Hang on a little bit more because there's more stuff in this bag. So, hmm. Okay, here is another thing in this bag. This is heavy. It's not nearly as heavy as this one, and this one is a lot smaller. Hmm. Let's think about it. You know, we're talking about properties. Uh-huh, we talk about properties when I'm digging in the box, I'm digging in the bag, and I'm finding more stuff, more stuff. Oh, that made a sound. Hmm, that doesn't make a sound as loud. Listen to the different sounds. Hmm. Well, there's more stuff in the bag, so let's pull it out and let's see what else is in the bag. Hmm, Ziploc bags. Oh, good. Just what we wanted, Ziploc bags. A Ziploc bag and a Ziploc bag and, oh my goodness gracious, what else is in this bag? Well, we'll see. We shall see. Now I want you to be thinking about what these things might have in common. How are they alike? Hmm, they don't look alike. They do have some features that are alike, but they don't look exactly alike. So what are we, I'm gonna put that one up there because it's black and it's not gonna show up real well against that black tablecloth. Let's see. 
different kind of sound. Different kind of sounds. Different sounds. Sounds are properties. Things that make sound. It's a nice tinkly sound, isn't it? It sounds like that would make a good wind chime. Okay. Now I have one more thing that I'm going to get out of this bag. And I'm going to set it right here because, oh no, there's more stuff in the bag. This is a bottomless bag. My goodness, oh my goodness. Here's some more little stuffs. Now I hope that your thinking cap has been going absolutely bonkers and you have realized that there is a connection between these things and we're going to have fun today because we're going to make something and talk about science stuff. So let me put this aside down under the table and let's talk. Now, you know, when I get this stuff that I bring from home, it's just exactly that. It's stuff that I have around the house and I want to talk to you about science and how how everything is all connected to science. So I have some things here that are non-living things and some things that are living. Well, they were once alive. They're not anymore. But that once upon a time, they were. Now, the first thing that I took out of the bag used to be a living thing. It's a sponge, a natural sponge that grew um, in an ocean somewhere, probably by an island maybe an island off the coast of Japan. And in the old days, before people realized that they thought this was just something that was a not, not living thing. You know, scientists divided everything at the beginning. They said, okay, this is living stuff and this is not living stuff. So they thought these were not living things. And then they thought, well, yeah, they're living, but they must be a plant. And then they figured out that they're an animal, which is really cool. Science changes, the more we learn, the more we understand similarities and differences, the better we can categorize things. When you help put the dishes away at the end of the day, when you've done all the dishes and you've got the silverware, sometimes we just take all the silverware and dump it in a drawer. But there's other families that put the forks in one place, the knives in one place, the spoons in another place, the iced teaspoons in another place, the little forks in another place, and they put everything in a special, special, and that's what scientists did. First of all, they had everything in one big lump, living and non-living. And then they started dividing it up. So I have real sponge. This is once a living sponge. These are all once upon a time living sponges. But in the kitchen, folks don't use a real sponge to wash the dishes. They use a cellulose sponge that's man-made, and I don't mean only made by men. I mean manufactured in a, in a factory by people, although probably now they're robots. So this would be a non-living, this was living. They look very similar. They've got, they're holy, they're porous. They absorb water, but these are man-made. These are nature-made. They occur naturally. Now, talking about oceans, you might have been to the beach and seen some of these shells on the beach. These are natural things too. They're an animal's covering. The animal lived inside the shell. These kinds are called mollusks. They're, that's their family name. Um, and honestly, I don't know the names of all the shells of the critters that were living in the shells. I know these are called cowries, and in some places this used to be used for money. Um, but the animal forms this hard covering. It's kind of like the turtle has that hard carapace covering over it. The snails that are in your yard have this hard covering and their body manufactures it. This was part of a living thing, but it's not living. It doesn't grow, doesn't reproduce, doesn't give off air, doesn't give off excrement. Now, the rocks, they're a natural thing. 
they have their they have their properties and these were never living but once upon a time they were part of a gigantic mountain and as the cold froze the rock the ice froze and and then it would thaw and it would seek down further in the little cracks and the next year it would freeze again and the rocks broke off and fell down the mountain and rolled into the river and the river rolled them down and down and down and wore them smooth but they were never living but they once were part of a great giant mountain now in the ocean where these things lived there's also, you may have seen them, jellyfish. So I thought we would have fun making our own jellyfish today with stuff from around the house. You got it, yes. So jellyfish are for the most part transparent. You could, you could get a, a, a sandwich bag and twist it and tighten it so that it's puffy like a jellyfish and you tie it with string and jellyfish have tentacles that stretch way down in the water, even farther than you can stretch when you stretch your arms out as far as you can go. There's some jellyfish tentacles that are more than 20 feet long, and that's pretty big. So this would be the body of my jellyfish, and I have some ribbon that would be the tentacles on my jellyfish. That's one way to do a jellyfish. Now, if you happen to have some paper plates. You can also make a jellyfish. And how? Well, this is exactly how. You get that paper plate and you fold it in half. Now, you have to have a pair of scissors. And remember, when you're using scissors, you have to be careful. You don't play with scissors. Don't run with scissors. I'm sure you've heard your teacher tell you that more than once. And get those scissors out of your mouth. Yes, I know. I taught second grade. I know how kids are. It's pretty bad when a fifth grader has the scissors in their mouth, though. So then you cut that paper plate in half down the fold that you made. And if you haven't been using scissors, now is a good time to practice because you don't want to be in the eighth grade and not know how to use scissors. So now I have two halves. My two halves used to be one whole one entire thing, now they're two halves. Now jellyfish are beautiful, and I brought a book that I bought at the Turtle Place in Port Isabel on Padre Island, and it's all about jellyfish. And this is a picture of one kind of jellyfish. Ours is not gonna look like that, but it's going to be similar to this. So take a look at this jellyfish. And if you wanna know more about jellyfish, go to visit the school library and ask the librarian if they have a book about jellyfish. If they don't, well then go explore on the internet with family, keeping an eye on where you're ending up because some things on the internet are not good for kids at all, not at all. Look how beautiful these jellyfish are. So many different ways to, to be a jellyfish, almost as many ways as there are to be humans. So, so now we have to have we have to have our tentacles. I, I just brought several things that we could do to make jellyfish. And whatever you happen to have at your house will be just fine. You know, finding stuff to do is kind of like recycling. And in one of these days, we're gonna talk about recycling because it's really fun to save all that packing that comes around packages. And you could make a, a moon landing place. Uh, you could just do all sorts of fun things. So I've got some lengths of yarn that are left over from a science project that I did with some parents not too long ago. And you can see that these, these, <laughs> these are different colors and that's why I liked this because they're, they're all different colors on the same thing of yarn. So I'm going to cut them up and I am going to put, I'm gonna use tape. I would suggest that you use tape if you have it. If you don't have tape, you use glue. But I also want to decorate the outside of my jellyfish. And so I brought some crayons. You know, one of the properties that we talk about is colors. And so I'm, I'm going to, this is not a full box, but it has many different colors in it. And I'm going to hold all of these colors together like this because jellyfish 
are not just one color. And I'm just going to smear that color around on my jellyfish out here. And I need to get a little more orange in there and a little more purple. I don't see purple at all. So there I, you know, this could be however you want your jellyfish to be. And I have my cellophane tape and I'm going to get a strip like this and I'm going to put my yarn on the tape on the end and jellyfish tentacles are not all the same length so it doesn't matter you don't have to measure you just put your yarn on the tape and it's going to look really pretty you can hang it from your ceiling you can suspend it on your desk if your teacher doesn't mind and you can have your own model jellyfish remember teachers use models to help us understand things that aren't maybe not safe. You know, I wouldn't want to bring a real rattlesnake in the classroom, but you might want to bring a rubber one. Um, and then you can see what a rattlesnake looks like and know that that's not one to play with. So here's my tentacles on my half of the jellyfish. And here's my other half of the jellyfish. And I brought my stapler because I'm not sure about how long it takes glue to dry. And I'm just going to staple around the side. And it only takes a few staples to hold this together. And there's my jellyfish with its long tentacles hanging down. Now the cool thing about jellyfish is they're floating on top of the water. And here's the tentacles down here. And here comes a silly little fish. And let's just pretend that this shell is one of the little fish. And a little fish comes swimming in here, and the jellyfish says, oh, lunch came to me. And it wraps its tentacles around that little fish and has lunch. Aren't you glad you don't have to get your lunch that way? So think about the stuff you've got laying around the house and how you could make your own jellyfish. This is a bag from a dry cleaner. And it's nice and transparent. And if you had a way to to capture air and this, this would make a really great jellyfish. That was really nice. So and it's simple and it's recycling and it's decorative. And you can just have a lot of fun figuring out ways to reuse, reduce and recycle. And I'd like to hear about how your classroom is doing that. Um, I know BISD is working really hard on recycling. And how are you recycling at your classroom? I know there's some schools that are that are saving the aluminum cans and the water bottles and the lids and the all sorts of things. So here's this quick jellyfish. All it did was tie the plastic together and there's the yarn that's hanging down and I could put more yarn on there. So be creative. Share your pictures. If you do some of this stuff, send us some pictures to KBSD to me and I'll see them and we'll share them as we get them, okay? We want to have fun with you. So keep having fun at school, learning a lot, reading books from the library, investigating, thinking, planning, and doing. And bye for now.